Have you ever wondered if the quality of your code is just not good enough? Well, today I will go over some of the most common anti-patterns in software development that might actually be making your code pretty bad. Hi guys, I am a software developer with over 10 years of experience and in this video I'm going to cover some of the most common anti-patterns that I have used in the past that I still see a lot of junior developers use and that I think are quite easily remedied. So as a disclaimer, I just want to point out that having done one or more of these anti-patterns does not actually make you a bad developer. I know I for sure have used many of them in my career. I still sometimes find myself using them. And you just need to be aware of them and do your best to avoid them in your everyday life. So let's start off with what are actually anti-patterns. Well, anti-patterns are like bad practices that developers execute. So an anti-pattern is just like a pattern, but instead of a solution, it gives something that just appears like a solution, but it's really not. All right, first anti-pattern, the lava flow. So the lava flow anti-pattern happens when developers leave old and unused code in a solution, usually because they think that they might need it later. And this usually never happens. Um, this code also has potentially been in the solution for some time. And so by keeping the status quo, the developers are potentially maintaining or even adding technical debt and causing themselves or developers who will work on the solution in the future potentially a lot of trouble. So one way to avoid this is to make sure to always spend the time needed to clean up and maintain a solution, even though it might seem like that's time wasting, it's really not. All right, the next anti-pattern is the boat anchor. So similar to the lava flow, the boat anchor anti-pattern is when developers keep redundant or low quality code because they're just afraid of what will happen if they remove it. Hence, it's becoming like a boat anchor. <laughs> so they have a fear of uncertainty. And so just like the previous anti-pattern, it's worth dedicating some time to clean up and maintain often rather than letting a lot of time pass and potentially a lot of obsolete code to accumulate. It's sort of like sweeping dust under the rug. Sooner or later, you will need to clean it up. All right, anti-pattern number three is error handling or not logging errors. So I used to do this one a lot when I was younger. This anti-pattern refers to not handling errors properly, wherever they may happen. On the UI side, no error is shown to the user, which can lead to a frustrating user experience, or even worse, the user is simply not realizing that there was an error. On the server side, the error is not logged and the stack is cleared, which leads to a lack of transparency when the issue needs to be investigated at a later stage. And trust me, it always needs to be investigated when there are errors. So just make sure to always log your errors with as much detail as possible and potentially add a meaningful message to present to the user if there is a UI involved. Next anti-pattern is the God object. So this next one is really common anti-pattern. A god object is basically an object that simply does too much. It's the proverbial Swiss army knife in software development. It has too much responsibility, which is usually a bad practice. The bad thing with god objects, especially in object-oriented programming, is that over time, they can leave the project overly complicated and they can also cause spikes in the memory. So really to avoid this anti-pattern, you should always try to practice separation of concern in your work to keep things clean and tidy. Copy pasting code. I think we're all guilty of doing this. Copy pasting code in different areas of the project. This basically creates a whole situation where you have a highly repetitive code that needs to be maintained in multiple places every time something needs changing. Instead, what you should try to do is um, to create reusable methods that are called in multiple places but have a central location where the reusable logic lives. This is a lot more maintainable in the long run. All right, this next one is a great one, reinventing the square wheel. So reinventing the square wheel refers to developing a complicated custom solution instead of using a standard existing solution. So the custom solution has really the potential to perform worse than an existing one that has already been tested and uh, used previously. So to avoid using this anti-pattern, try to use standardized solutions where possible. 
That way you benefit from saving time and using an implementation that has been tested through extensive use in other projects and by other developers. So as a general, one relatively easy way to avoid using anti-patterns is to write unit tests for your code. And not only that, but also to make sure that you cover as much as possible with them. This will go a long way to prevent you from using anti-patterns by reinforcing clearly defined modular code, which is usually always a good practice anyway. All right, that's it for today. Um, let me know what you think of these anti-patterns and if you would like to hear some more that I know of. Let me know if you are a developer, do you use some of them? Have you used these in the past? And if so, what steps have you done to avoid using them in the present? I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, then please consider subscribing as it would really help my relatively new channel a lot.